Hi everyone, this is Daniel and welcome back to the Jeep EV conversion project. I know I've been posting in a while, so sorry for making you guys wait. Um, but in this video, I'm going to be going over the wiring I've done for the batteries as well as the electrical components in the front of the Jeep. And I've made some significant progress. The Jeep is mostly running now, um, so let's get started. And before we jump further into the video, up until this point, I mated the electric motor and transmission and then mounted the electric motor back into the engine bay of the Jeep. So make sure to check out my previous videos if you haven't already. First, I had to construct the battery pack. So these are what the batteries look like right now. I'm actually going to condense them into two rows of 27 uh, modules. My plan was to construct a battery pack consisting of two rows of 27 modules with buddy groups of three modules wired in parallel and those buddy groups wired for 18 in series. This would give me a pack with a nominal voltage of around 135 volts at 195 amps, which is about a 26 kilowatt hour battery pack. For a vehicle the size of my Jeep, this would give me about 50 miles of range, give or take. Once I constructed the two rows of modules, I mounted them in the trunk of the Jeep. I also began constructing a mounting point for the 500 amp fuse and the high voltage cabling going from the batteries in the trunk to the front of the Jeep. You can see um, I drilled a hole, um, the floor of the car, right the cables down through this hole. I decided to run the high voltage positive and negative cables going from the batteries in the trunk to the front of the Jeep under the car. Hole tubing from under the car. Um, and those are going to be routed going up towards the engine bay. Now it was time to mount all the other electric components in the engine bay. And I started by creating a platform over the electric motor for the components. All right, so we got the second bar in. This board would house the motor controller, shunt, main contactor, and potentiometer, as well as some ancillary cables. Progress was slow and steady. Holes are drilled. Okay, got some of the electric components mounted to this little platform here that's going to be um, going into the engine bay of the Jeep. So we have the uh, motor controller here, potentiometer, shunt, and contactor are here, um, and then some holes for all the cabling to come up into this platform. After a bit of fabrication, it was time to mount the platform into the engine bay. So this is what the engine bay looks like right now. Once the component room was in, I began connecting the high voltage, positive, and negative cables running from the battery pack in the trunk of the Jeep. The positive cable connects directly to a shunt, and the negative cable connects directly to the motor controller. And then these should connect. I also attached the throttle cable to the potentiometer. Okay, so we got the throttle cable attached here. Uh, do a quick test. Uh, it seems to work with the gas pedal. Cool. Then I mounted the DC to DC converter right next to the 12 volt battery. This converts high voltage direct current, such as the 135 volts coming from my battery pack to 12 volts so that it can charge my car battery. After a bit of time, I got most of the wiring done in the engine bay. The positive line from the battery pack passes first through a shunt, then the main contactor. The contactor only allows power through to the motor controller if the 12 volt key ignition is turned on. This is how the car starts. Both positive and negative lines are connected to the motor controller, which sends power to the electric motor below it receives a signal from the potentiometer. The potentiometer is triggered by the throttle cable, or the gas pedal. 
You might also notice that there is cabling going directly from the main contactor to the DC to DC converter. This is how the 12 volt Jeep battery stays charged and therefore all the other electric systems in the car work. I also installed an electric vacuum pump to act as a brake booster in the absence of the engine. Now back to the batteries in the back. There's time to wire all the additional battery related electrical systems. The first thing I did was begin wiring the battery management system. This took considerable research and planning as there are a lot of connections to be made. So many connections necessary for this BMS. I mounted the battery management system, battery management satellite system, and electric vehicle charge controller on the side wall of the Jeep. Then I endeavored to mount the charging port, which would connect directly to the onboard vehicle charger. Okay, so we got the uh, charging port right here. It's a type one, J1772. Um, and we're gonna mount this in the, uh, the gas compartment. Yep. Okay, so we got the cables from the uh, charging port wired through this hole here. These are going to connect to the um, EVCC and the charger. After all that was done, I decided to finally do what I had been putting off for a while, and that was to connect the battery pack together using copper bus bars. Along with that, I had to wire each of the 36 connections in the battery management system to a cell on the battery pack. Just using this uh, VMS harness tester to test the voltage. You may be wondering why I had to make so many connections. And the reason is that the battery management system allows me to monitor each cell in my battery pack. This means I can keep them balanced, or essentially keep their voltages similar so bad things don't happen. Tapping into the charge controller through CAMBUS on my laptop, I was able to do a quick test of the charging system, and it looked like it worked. Okay, so this is pretty much the finished battery wiring for the Jeep. Power flows in from the charge port to the onboard vehicle charger, and then this onboard vehicle charger converts that power to the correct voltage for the battery pack. The battery pack is fully monitored by the battery management system and EV charge controller. The battery management system, or BMS, monitors the battery pack itself, and the charge controller monitors both the BMS and charger in relation to each other. We also got a emergency disconnect right here um, to disconnect the line that goes towards the front of the car, um, and then all of the and the positive end of the line for the battery runs through a 500 amp fuse right there. Right here, I actually have a high voltage switch, so I can actually cut power to each half of the battery pack if necessary. So that's generally what the wiring looks like for the batteries. Now that most of the electric components were wired together, I remounted the drive shaft and put transmission fluid back in the transmission. 